Okay, all right, hold on. Okay. So I am working on this simple motion responsive composer and I'm building it for a STEAM night, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math at an elementary school. Hence the, the shirt, which sorry, it is actually green, so I'm kind of see-through today. Oh well. So I'm building this and I thought maybe I would show you what I was doing because I was having a lot of fun with it. Here, uh, I'm doing it in Max. I'm using Max to do the motion analysis, and I'm just doing kind of simple frame-to-frame -frame comparison called absolute differencing, or maybe frame differencing, where I'm, I'm comparing the difference in the color of the pixels at every frame. And then if there's more difference, then there's more motion. And I take that value, and I use it uh, right here as a kind of guess at how much movement or activity is happening in the camera view. And then taking that value and I am using it to generate some MIDI notes. So I do some smoothing up here. I am also uh, doing this weird sliding thing, uh, which I started to use peak and then I decided I liked it better like this. This is weird, let me show you this. Uh, when I turn it on, this, this uh, value right here goes into a slide object, which is set to 0 and 100, which means that on, on up, if it goes up uh, more motion, those steps will not be smoothed at all. But if the value is going down, slide is going to smooth those values out, so it's going to take a lot longer for the value to come down. So check this out. Okay, so you're noticing, I'm trying to be still here so that <laughs> the sound is not too loud, um, that as I'm moving, this value here is going up. But when I, right there it is, and then it's gonna slowly come back down to zero. So I'm using that value, I'm, I'm dividing our current motion by the most recent peak. Right, that's what I'm calling it, the most recent peak. It's always kind of slowly going back to the current, which has this effect of making, here, let me turn it off for a second, has this effect of making the, the system really responsive to motions that happen after a long period of stillness. So it, it can be really responsive, like those quick kind of movements like this, which kids, my audience here for tonight, tend to like to do. So I'm taking all that, I am sending, uh, I'm, I'm creating MIDI notes, and I'm not gonna walk through the details of this patch, but just know that it's like a G minor scale. I'm creating pitches, and I'm using counter and some randoms, and I'm changing how fast the metro is, is counting through those. And the concept here is that we have like xylophones in G minor all over the ceiling and floor, and that you can kind of just like and you end up with like hitting all of these different xylophone notes in order, typically in order of the scale, up and down and up and then maybe further, blah, blah, blah. So we're doing that and then I am sending it, uh, I'm doing this with MIDI, right? And instead of using the kind of traditional built-in 128 option default MIDI, I am sending this to GarageBand. And I do that by using the note out object and changing the, you can double click here uh, and choose from max one or you can do it with a message like I am here. And that turns max into a MIDI controller, just like if you had taken a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard and plugged it into your computer. So then I go straight to GarageBand and I'll turn it on for a second. Okay, so you get the picture here. We can use it as this MIDI controller, which means we can record um, or we can just play it live. So check that, this out. Let's go back and record a little bit. Oops, did I hit record? No, I didn't turn it on. And 
And then I have uh, these MIDI notes that I just generated, which now I can use in my composition. And we have a whole song, which I wrote, kind of. And just for fun, we're going to pair this with some visuals that my colleague Lauren Olson uh, created. So I'm going to run this real quick and show you that. And turn it on. Where is it? Turn it on. Check it out. Uh-oh. Oh, wait, why is my camera not running? Oh, no, what happened? You know why it's not running? Because I'm using my camera as an axe. That's a problem. I have to fix that. Okay, so this project's not over. I'm gonna go fix that now. Uh, I hope you guys have some fun with this. <laughs>